All right, so I'm outside of a 2018 Honda Fit. This is the EXL model, so you can notice by the alloy wheels are a little bit different setup. Uh, this car does have keyless entry, uh, so I'll explain this in just a second. I'll move you to the back here real quick. Now your cargo space back here. I have a setup right now with two different setups. So you can see this seat, and then you can see this one. This one's a little bit further back. I'm just showing you that you have an additional spot. You can lower it back when you're sitting in that back seat. Uh, other things, you've got your toggles here uh, in case you need to hook up a car seat. And if you needed to lay down a cover, you can purchase that separately. Uh, the car does come with carpet floor mats. So that is something standard in the car. And then your, your spare is underneath here with all your parts and everything. So you do have a spare in this car. Now moving around to the back seat. I have them folded completely up right now so you can see the spacing you have. Uh, so you could throw a bicycle in here if you turn the wheel sideways, a TV, potted plants. If you're moving weird shaped stuff, you can still do it. Uh, and then of course the seats fold completely flat too. So I'll show you that here in just a second. Uh, so as far as fold them down, and it actually is a good flat surface that you're working from here. So that way you can see. Uh, so it's just kind of nice. This car and the HRV are the only two that allow you to fold them up and down. Now keyless entry, as I was mentioning, uh, right here, when I walk up, I put my hand on the door handle, it automatically unlocks for me. When I'm walking away from the car, I can press this black button and it'll lock the doors for me. So I never have to get that key fob out of my pocket. Uh, and then you'll notice I do have uh, the lighting uh, indicators on the sides of the car, so part of the EXL model. The uh, EX model will also have the smart key entry, but I just want you to know what it is and how it works. So now that we're in the car, let's go over some stuff. So I'm gonna start over on the left. Uh, you do have uh, power windows, and your driver's side is an auto up-down window. Uh, you do have power door locks and power mirror locks, and then your, or excuse me, window locks. Your mirror controls, you've got a left and a right, and then you can adjust it. Down here. So a couple buttons. First is the econ button. Anytime you press this button, you will see a green leaf come on up here right in the center. What that does is it improves gas mileage, but it's going to shut down electrical systems, affecting things like the AC unit and your accelerator. So keep that in mind if you're using this. It's going to affect acceleration. Uh, or if you live in Texas, where right now you can see down there it's 100 degrees, maybe you want to wait until you get the car cooled off to turn this on because it does dampen it a little bit. It's not that noticeable, but it is there. Uh, other buttons that are down here. So right here is your collision mitigated braking system. So in the event that uh, it's looking like you're going to hit a car, First, it'll alert you and then can actually break the car. So this is on right now unless I press it and hold it to turn it off. Uh, right here is my road departure mitigation. So you can see it's on by the green line right here. Uh, in the event that I go off this side of the road, uh, it's going to first start to beep at me and then it's actually going to vibrate the wheel to let me know, hey, wake up, pay attention, you're, you're drifting off the side of the road. Uh, and then vehicle stability assist, this works with my traction control. So in the event that I go into a skid, it will transfer power to whichever wheel is getting more traction to help correct for that. The only time I'd want to turn this off is if I was stuck in the mud and wanted to spin my tires while somebody's trying to help push me out. Uh, all these buttons you have to press and hold for a couple seconds to turn them off uh, and it'll beep at you, it'll make an alert. So just be aware of that. Uh, moving over to the steering wheel. So I'll start you up here. This first button right here is just a quick toggle. It jumps between audio and Bluetooth. So that's what it does just to make life a little bit easier on you. Uh, and then of course, your plus and your minus is your volume controls. Your left and your right is gonna actually jump between uh, your stations. If you're listening to the uh, the radio, uh, if you're listening to like audio, it'll jump between tracks, things like that. Uh, so that's just how that works. My source button will jump between FM, AM. This car has Sirius XM. Uh, you know, so anything that I've toggled up and running, it'll switch between, so that's how that works. Um, down here, this is just gonna be my general menu screen. So like right now I'm in the radio, if I press this, you'll see this screen pop up. And it just allows me to scan and do some preset stuff, working all off the steering wheel. So I don't have to mess with the touch screen or anything over there while I'm driving. So that's what this button is for. Now down below this, you're gonna see the three controls for the Bluetooth. Uh, this would be to answer a phone call and you pull this towards you to hang up or go back in case I've selected the wrong screen, uh, and then my, my voice command button. So this is gonna be really cool. This is gonna work uh, for a couple different things. First, it's gonna use for voice command, just call so-and-so, that sort of thing. This is also gonna work with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which I'll get to in just a second, uh, but I'll come back to this. Uh, up top, you'll notice I do have these silver paddle shifters. I've got a plus, I've got a minus, so I can control the car a little bit more to my liking uh, in case you're a little bit more of that type of person with your driving. Uh, you want more control over it and, and how you shift and things like that. Now. Over here on the right side, first is the main button. Anytime you want to use any of these features down here, you want to make sure the main button is on. When it's on, you are going to see ACC and LKS come on, which you can see it over here in this corner right there. That's what's flashing at me right now, right? Uh, so when those are on, LKS stands for Lane Keep Assist, uh, and ACC stands for Adaptive Cruise Control. So the first one I'll start you off is Adaptive Cruise Control. So let's say I get up to the speed I want to set at 65 per se, and I, I press set. From there, I can now determine uh, how much distance I want to keep between me and the car in front of me using this button. Now, when you do that, you're going to see those four boxes that are decreasing and increasing right now. Uh, the more boxes, the more space it's going to keep between you and the car in front of you. So that's how that works. 
So that way if the guy in front of me slows down to 55 while my speed is set to 65, it'll keep that designated amount of space, whatever I'm setting it to, and slow down and speed the car up so I don't have to turn it on and off. Uh, and I can adjust the speed that I want my car to be set to with the plus and the minus right here. Or I can cancel to get completely out of it. Now that's how that works. Lane keep assist. Now that's gonna be this button right here. When I turn this button on here, you are gonna see some dotted lines over here, which I got flashing at you right now. So this works when you're going from 45 miles an hour to 90 miles an hour. Anytime these dotted lines over here fill in solid, uh, it means it's now reading the road. To read the road, it's using a camera up in this box right here. So it's, it's looking down on the road to detect the lines. So keep that in mind. If, if you're on a really you know beat up road with 19 lines they've repainted, it's not gonna work as well. Um, but it's there designed to help protect you and keep you from drifting in and out of your lane. Uh, so, if it's running, what it'll do is it'll detect, it'll just, it'll pull the wheel a little bit to the left and the right if you're not using your, so let's say I start to drift to the left out. Uh, if I'm not using my blinker, it's gonna help, and it's just gonna lightly pull me back and kind of keep me centered in that lane. So I can overpower it, don't be, don't be worried about that. It's just real subtle and it's there to help. And you can turn it on and off in case you don't wanna use it, so know that. Um, so that's how that function works. Now moving down below, I've got some controls right here, and this is actually for the menu that I've been showing you up here. So if I select this, I can toggle through some different screens up here, and you'll see tripometer, oil life, my vehicle settings, which actually vehicle settings I wanna go in and do. So I'm gonna select this. Uh, to select it, I, I hit the select button. That's this middle button right here. You just pull it towards you. Uh, so as you see, I have my tire pressure monitoring system calibration, uh, driver assist, that's gonna be you know your adaptive cruise control, your lane keep assist, things like that, where you can adjust uh, some distances and some, uh, and some things like that. Uh, you know, meter setup, keyless access setup. Uh, this is as far as your key fobs, uh, as far as what you want and how they uh, they affect as far as opening one door or two doors when you grab door handles and things like that. Uh, my lighting setup as far as how long the ex interior exterior lights stay when I get out and out of the car. Door setup, so this one I like, I always wanna show you this. My auto door lock is set up. So right now it's set up to where when I hit 10 miles an hour, it'll automatically lock the doors. So you can see with vehicle speed right there. And I can adjust it to when I shift to park, it automatically locks the doors or I can turn it off. Uh, so I just have some different options here. So I'm gonna jump back out of that and then I can set my door lock setup, you know, so you can set them when they unlock, when they when they lock. Uh, keyless and remote, uh, that's gonna be kind of nice you can mess with. Walk away auto lock, I really like this feature. What this is, is if I get outside of 10 feet from my car and I haven't already locked the doors, if this is on, what'll happen is it'll lock them when I hit, get outside of 10 feet with the key fob in my pocket. So that way if you're walking into the grocery store uh, and you're like, man, I, I think I forgot to lock the doors, this feature is set up for you to where you don't ever have to worry about that again. Uh, and, and all I do is you, you just toggle through with these to pick what you want and then select it. Uh, and then when you want to exit out of that screen, I go back and you know and find the exit button and then select it again. So that's how to work through this in case you're messing with anything on there. Uh, so over to the left, you can see I have my tachometer. I've got uh, you know a, a time, uh, a temperature, my uh, my actual speedometer, and then over to the right, I have that that menu screen that I've been using to show you some different things. Um, as far as the steering wheel, you've got the whole rundown of how the steering wheel works. Over here to the left, uh, I do have auto on off lights, which I can set right there to the auto hash. Uh, and then my fog light controls are right here. Uh, you're gonna notice a button right here on the tip of the blinker stock. So anytime I turn my right blinker on, or if I press this button, this camera is gonna come on. Uh, and this is actually hanging off the bottom of my, uh, my mirror, so you can see it dangling down there. Uh, no, so red line is the end of my car. Red to orange is a car length and orange to orange is a car length. The purpose of this camera is so when I'm driving looking down the road, I don't have to look back over my right shoulder and away from the road to see who's over there in case I need to exit the highway, uh, in case I heard a motorcycle and I don't know where he went, uh, just things like that. So it's keeping my eyes forward as opposed to back. So this is only on the right side. The left side, you have your left mirror to work from, so that's how they have it set up. Uh, and I can just press this button on the tip of the blinker so I can turn it on and off whenever I want. So you can see I've got it flashing on and off right now. So that way if I heard a guy and was like, man, where'd that guy go? I could just take a look and see if he's sitting over there. So really cool feature, I really like it a lot now that it's on this car. Um, <clears throat> windshield wiper control. So if I pull the whole thing down, it affects the front windshield wipers. Uh, the back controls are right here with a small tab. It is intermittent, so I can, uh, I can affect the speeds right there. Now jumping over, <clears throat> this car has a keyless entry, so it's push button start right here, so just so you know what's going on there. Don't have to get the key fob out of my pockets. My flashers are right above. Uh, my touch screen right here. Uh, you'll notice there is a volume control on this touch screen. That's an, an addition that they made to this vehicle. Uh, a lot of people prefer just to have a volume knob at some point, so now the car has one. Now, audio-wise, since I have F or AM pulled up right now, I'm just gonna press the source button right here and show you all my audio options. So I've got FM, AM, 90 days of satellite radio. I do have USBs. I can hook up anything pretty much with an I into the USB. Uh, Bluetooth, Pandora compatibility. If you're a Spotify guy or girl, you can always use the Bluetooth and still listen to Spotify, so don't worry, you're not giving up anything there. Uh, jumping back out of this to my home screen. 
because that was under audio. Info, so this is where I'm gonna get like tripometer information or I can put up a screensaver here. So right now you're getting trip info, so you can see current, previous trip, and then my uh, range, how many miles I've left on this tank of gas. Uh, if I wanted to change that, I can press the menu button right here uh, and then it gives me some different options, so like clock and wallpaper. In case I just want a general quiet screen there, I don't want a lot going on. And I can load a picture to this uh, through the USB down here, which actually, let me flip that down, is right there. Uh, so if I wanted to picture my dogs, my favorite team, you know, you just make a small JPEG and it'll, it'll, it'll work for you. So that's how that works. Uh, going back to the home screen. So Honda Link is set up to where I can uh, I can connect up on my phone and, and it'll just give me maintenance reminders, recall notices, things like that. So it's just designed to help you out as far as your car and keeping everything in, in good running condition. Now my phone button over here, this is gonna allow me to get to my Bluetooth controls and settings. Uh, if you wanna connect up a phone to Bluetooth, I'll show you how to do that from settings. So we're gonna go to settings. From here, you can go to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Then you're gonna go to the Bluetooth device list right here. From there, at the very bottom of the screen, it says add Bluetooth device. You're going to select that. And it's going to say, please turn on your Bluetooth and set it to discoverable. If you have an iPhone, it's automatically discoverable. Hit OK. It'll now start to search for your phone. So that's what's going on there. So I'm going to jump back out of this. Um, if it's the first time you're connecting with any phone to this car, you can hit the phone button and it'll walk you through those prompts automatically. Uh, if you want to add additional phones, this is going to be the settings way I just showed you. So smartphone connection down here. This is where Apple CarPlay and Android Auto come into play. So I could plug my phone into the USB down here, see the one with the phone right there on it. This will light up and either show you the Android Auto symbol or Apple CarPlay, it'll say Apple CarPlay on it. What that allows me to do is to access uh, my phone to get the navigation up on the screen. So for iPhones, I've got to have Apple Maps. For Android-based users, you're gonna have Google Maps or the option of Waze, so that's kind of cool. Um, it also gives me options like, you know, iHeart Media, or excuse me, iHeart Radio uh, Media. Uh, it's gonna give me Spotify, it'll give me Pandora. Um, there's a lot of different things. Open Table, I think, pops up on here. Uh, so there's some different apps that you can pull up and have on here uh, that would be based through your phone. It's not gonna use all of your apps, so just be aware of that. Uh, but there's just some really cool functions as far as getting to my music saved on my phone using Google Music, or if uh, you're, you're an iPhone user, you know? Um, you know, so music, maps, messages, everything. Uh, what I really like about it is when it's connected up, it, it connects up uh, via your phone too, so I can use the voice command button over here to ask Siri to do anything, or use, using for OK Google as far as directions and things like that. Uh, so it gives you some additional controls. And I just feel like Siri's um, uh, voice recognition system works a little bit better than the cars. Uh, so, so, you, so you're just taking advantage of the better of the tools, basically. Uh, so that's kind of the rundown of the screen right here. Uh, obviously the home button is very important to remember your volume controls if you want to turn everything on and off as far as your audio options, I've got that and then my volume control right here. Uh, now moving down your AC control, so hot and cold, you can see my tab, uh, how much air, so my tab's on two right now, and then where I want that air to go. Uh, down below that, I do have a power outlet and then I've got a USB. I've got a couple cup holders down here, cup holders in all my doors, uh, including the back also, my general shifter. Um, emergency brake, and then I do have um, heated seats in this model, so it does have uh, your passenger and uh, your side. Uh, this is an EXL, so it does come with a leather interior, so it's got black leather interior. Uh, and then you'll notice my dashes and doors, and everything that collects uh, sun is always going to be black to prevent glare. Uh, so that is the EXL model. Uh, other than that, it's going to be, you know, sunroof comes in the car standard, and then your controls for the sunroof are right here. Uh, and then over here, we'll control like when your, uh, your lights come on when you have the doors uh, open or not. So that's the rundown of the EXL model Fit 2019. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. You can comment on the YouTube video. I'm usually pretty good about getting back quick. Uh, you can call me at 512-443-4300. I'd be more than happy to talk to you if I'm available. Uh, or you can email me at the letter J and then Fuller, my last name, F-U-L-L-E-R. So J Fuller at howdyhonda.com. Hopefully you're doing well. Let me know if you have any questions. Enjoy your car. Uh, be more than happy to help you out any way I can. Thank you much.